That was fun. <laughs> I'm sweating incredibly right now. <laughs> Being on the face. That was pretty stank. He's trying to channel as much uh, Wolf Peck. <laughs> they know we are all fans. Oh. Yes. There's so much counter rhythms going on. I was just like, I'm just going to stay like steady. <laughs> if in yeah. doubt, go. I had that unexpected skank in there. Unexpected skank, but <laughs> well, not in that, that not in that way. You have to be familiar with the reggae skank. Ian O'Sullivan. Just hear me out. <laughs> we got the man back. Yeah. We've been we've been recording Andrew. for actually a Thank couple you. hours. Yeah. <laughs> Some other things. Yeah. We we did a number of uh, lessons for our members, so right just on. really cool stuff.
So um, that's it. That's the lesson. So all three of these ukes are getting donated for Maui, which is pretty amazing. Cause oh, these two? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. So we we got two of those that are posted on the website, but then they sent an extra two of the same limited edition custom oh, wow. models from Rebel. That's awesome. Check this out. So this you can you cover one, and then you can. You blow into the sound hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you play like an ocarina. Yeah, it's like a, like a ihu, like a nose flute. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Five st- <laughs> side ports. I feel like it's mathematic. Yeah. That was a very wise decision. To, to you know the guys at Rebel? Yeah. <laughs> Them Rebels. Yeah, we're going to do an odd number. <laughs> but Peter really came with like some oh, just... Geez. Stunning. I mean, this has to be the nicest cornerstone I've ever seen. <laughs> Which is to say something, because this stuff is just... Yeah. It's always just banging. It's got the tree mahogany. It's got some of the coolest inlays I've ever seen. Redwood color? Or is that red cedar?
<laughs> <sighs> like a hot day. I'm, you know, I'm like chocolate forgotten in a car, just <laughs> melted, melted all over a seat. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's not disappointing. It's still know, sweet. It's still sweet. <laughs> it's still sweet. It's got the yes. same flavor. <laughs> Just even quicker to the palate. <laughs> A little messy. All in one piece. Just, just oh, yeah. why not? Uh, that was, that that was syrupy. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So sweet. It's 1924 Redwood, California Redwood on that. And, uh, Killer, the tree mahogany on the back and sides. Quilted. <laughs> oh, goodness so. gracious. Would you look at that? Just the that best. That is unreal. The best mahogany ever. Wow. It's denser than typical mahogany, closer to like a rosewood. What a amazing pattern. Just. And if you look on the floor. inside, you'll see the banyan tree. All oh, right. Yeah. He's got engraved on the inside of the instrument the legendary banyan tree of Lahaina. Right. I mean, I wow. can't think of a more amazing donation. Somebody is going to get one hell of a uke. Yeah, I feel like Peter would be like, he put so much design into the sound hole. What were those um, those toys from the 80s where you would put in the, the film you could look through and it's just like a scene from a movie? Oh, mm, I, I feel like that's <laughs> like, you look at his colors and it's just, it, it's like, oh my yeah. god, that's the, that's the <laughs> freaking banyan dream in color, yeah. 8K. And it's moving. Paradise. So, well, how's this happening? There's a lady doing a hula. <laughs> you put your ear up to his freshman music playing? Yeah. Wow. The ocean. <laughs> yeah. It's alive. It's, it's got its own... What? Even the... I don't even know what you call that piece, but the brace piece that goes across and oh, it yeah. has holes in it. Like His, his design is the, pretty next level. Even the linings he uses. Yeah. Even the even the um just the side pieces for the brace, the way they're cut. Like what is that extra little slit in the tiny pieces? Like I've never even seen that. It's so meticulous. Peter's part alien. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, and it's only him. One guy. So it takes about five years for an instrument. He's actually <laughs> thirty days. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wow. Well, he must have the that process. Yeah. Quite. First time putting your hands on a cornerstone. Mm -hmm. It is nice fat tone. Yeah.
Ian's about to give birth. <laughs> I'm about to give well, birth. Really. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He's about to. He's he's gonna have a baby girl. I'm not sure. Not I'm, sure. <laughs> I know you you don't know yet, but I'm gonna call it. Okay. <laughs> I've been calling girl. I've been calling girl. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I don't know why. It doesn't. I mean, either way. I just well, want you to be like me, have the, the boy and then the girl. But you could be like Corey, <laughs> have two boys. Yeah. Uh, Carry on the family so name. So they can fight with each other <laughs> over who gets the toy. Corey's yeah. got to get two toys. I have day. to buy things in pairs. <laughs> That's the only things that work work out now. So I have, if you, you walk into my house and be like, why do you have two of everything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very, it's, it's a very calculated. How's your boy, things. Ian? Amazing. Yeah. He's a uh, couple two and, years, two and a half. Yeah, two and. Uh, he's was uh, he, he's studying mechanical just, engineering by now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's you know he's he's getting into amazing. <laughs> he's composing classical music. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to his songs like, oh, first, that's a one, four, and five. Yeah, first symphony. Yeah, that's <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna bring him in one day. Oh, this is Uncle Andrew. Hey, Uncle. Like, wait, aren't you like two and a half? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, he loves. <laughs> Check out this this book I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Not not surprised. I expected yeah. no less. No, he's he's a, he's um, two and a, very two and a half. You know, he's got when he's got his mindset, he's uh, determined. You know, he's very strong willed. Put it that way, and he's uh, yeah, it's great. They you call know. it terrible twos. They call it the easygoing twos. Isn't right? that isn't yeah. that what they call it? <laughs> like the the go with the flow twos. Yeah. Except your son is with... probably a quantum physicist. Yeah. No, no. no. Be, be <laughs> very two. Don't He's strangle like... your two year old. <laughs> yeah. He's like, Dad, have you heard of the, the uh, particle collider? Like, what? He's uh, he's amazing. You know, it's 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 interesting being a, a high school teacher, um, being a, a music teacher for so many years, you know, and then stepping into the role as a parent um, with him has been a very um, eye-opening experience for, you know, patience and, um, you know, when it comes to different things, but patience and just understanding how, how the joy of learning is so real, you know. He, he's so excited when he figures something out. He's so excited when he learns something and he just wants to show off and, and sh tell us about how he knows that, this goes here or or that he knows where his forks are and he wants to grab it and he wants to pour the milk or whatever you know what i mean like, everything is fresh e everything relativity. is exciting yeah yeah oh how cool is i that? know right it reminds us what life is when yeah it's all i'm new. like oh, i gotta pump gas i'm like oh remember the first time i got to <laughs> yeah. pump gas yeah, it was right. fun it was fun. I was like, I want to do that. Or I want to mow the lawn. My dad was windows. like, you sure you want to mow the lawn? Because you're going to be mowing the lawn the rest of your life. And you want to mow the lawn? I'm like, well, I want to mow the lawn. I remember being an intermediate. I couldn't wait to mow the lawn. <laughs> Judging by the last few sentences, we've lived two different realities. <laughs> like, like, huh, I don't want to do that. Well, I mean, just like... I never, I'll, one, I never had a lawn. <laughs> and um, anyways... It's his model, right? You just want to do whatever adults are doing. It sounds like he had a good nourishing family. <laughs> crazy. What's, what's, what's wrong with you? Oh, no. no I just uh, grew up in poverty. Yeah. <laughs> he had a bad attitude, Corey. No, no. I mean, I tend to be pessimistic towards things. You know, not, not to be... It's all relative. Just because you were on the wrong it side is. of Mililani... It's like it's better than being on the. Hey, what's up? No, I'm, I'm sorry for bringing up lawn mowing. I didn't realize that was gonna... lawn <laughs> mowing. I heard, I've heard of one of those. But no, for, for for me, the first couple of years are the hardest because, you know, I mean, after that is when the personality really starts coming out, and you right. can develop friendship, and they're not just being wild. Yeah. Oh, I love my favorite thing right now is waiting for him when he wakes up in the morning, you know, and being able to just. I, I, I've been waking up at like four thirty five in the morning so I can work on my uh, books. I'm working on a ukulele and guitar textbook. I'm currently on sabbatical from work. and But the idea is, you know, um, <clears throat> finding quiet time with a toddler can be challenging. And just so I can get at least an hour and a half, two hours of some nice quiet focus, I've been getting up quite early. And anyway, so one of my favorite things now is to 
you know, as soon as he wakes up, I close the computer. I just know it's fine, you know. And I just sit there and wait in the living room, wait for him to walk out and say good morning. And I'm just curious to what he's going to say. You know, like, what is his first word? What is his utterance going to be? Like, oh, there's a, there's a, a lion outside. Oh? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lion. I saw it in the front. It's, it's outside and we got it. He's still mid dream. Oh, yeah, or he's telling me about it, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, is that what you saw? You know, and I just find that fascinating, you know. And I, every morning, I just, I almost want to film it, but I can't. I, I want to film it because I don't want to ruin the, yeah. the connection and the the realness, you know, the realness of it. And and um, so I've been meaning to just kind of like set up a, a, a like a candid camera or something and just just to catch it because it's I I never know what he's going to say. He's going to come out and be like, "Hi, Dad." How are you? Or something, you know, he'll come up with that. Or, or hey, hey, Dad. Oh, oh, like, and, and then, oh, um, <clears throat> it's raining outside. The sun's gone. You know, he might wake up early. Oh, the sun's still sleeping. Or some, you know, I never, just never know. And, <laughs> and sweet. it's interesting. Like, the, the way that now he's formulating, right? And he wants to tell me about his own observations. Like, that's a big step. And it's just really interesting, you know, just coming from the teacher's perspective, you know, and, and, and having taught music for so long and essentially trying to take people from very beginner, first time maybe playing an ukulele or a guitar and leading them through, just kind of appreciating that um, blossoming of experience, you know. And the more you learn with the instrument, the more it gives back to you, the more connections you make the more patterns you recognize and you just we just i find it fascinating and it's exciting and cool and and that's what keeps us going but you know just every day you know being around someone who's so excited to learn about how to you know chop watermelon or how to um you know put stuff in the blender and push the button you know and he can stand there in his little stool and push the button for us and just every it's so exciting you know and just to remember that, that we're so blessed and you know to try to take every moment for what it is and um not like take advantage of things yeah. amazing dad well he's an amazing kid and i'm very lucky and we're excited to have number two you know we're, i know that yeah it, it's amazing you know i look at him and i'm like how can i love anything more than that and then the, i know number two is going to come and be like I just know. <laughs> and then I think you're what I've heard is your heart just gets bigger, you know, and and it's like it's you know we can draw analogies with many things, but I find that with music too. I've and when I think back on that, I'm like, yeah, you know, at one point I didn't like bluegrass, and then I played in a bluegrass band, and I love bluegrass now. Yeah, I got to know it, and I'm like, man, that's amazing music, actually. Yeah, or or classical at one point, right? I I signed up for my major in college, and I thought Eric Clapton played classical guitar. <laughs> Because he played a nylon string, you know, and that's the, you know, Byron Yasui was auditioning me and he was like, do you have any idea? He said this, he's like, do you know what you're major, you're auditioning for? And I was like, I, 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 I think I don't from the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't believe and, that, you're not that naive. But you're no, tone. I didn't. And I, <laughs> I, don't I, believe I, you. I played Eric Clapton from a tape recording for my classical guitar audition, you know, because I was playing it by ear. I didn't read music at all. And anyways, so, so digress, he, he, you know. It's exciting, you know, just being around and, and having that appreciation for learning and someone who's so excited to learn every little bit and just reminds me to be a little more present, a little more appreciative of every day and moment. And, and you know, things will go the way they go. You can try to control things. You can try to be like, hey, I know it's going to go this way. I want to, you know, do everything I can to make sure. But in the end, you just roll with it. And... Amen. That's part of having kids. Yeah. Is just rolling with it. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, what are you expecting, you boy or girl? And I'm like, I just, I don't know, man. I'm, it's going to be great. You know, I'm just excited to welcome them. Period. Yeah. When we had um, my daughter for the first six months, she was like colicky and she screamed her head off. Oh. And then she turned into the best kid ever that she's been ever since. But after six months, <laughs> no, I'm just no, playing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, psych. I, I just remember a period where I was like telling my wife, like, I, I think we made a mistake. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's not, it was just really hard. Like, yeah. Five times as hard as oh. having white or something. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, the blessings come so much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. We're really excited, you know, and we just know that, you know, my wife Janelle and I, we're, we're both, you know, 
just yeah, trying to appreciate our last moments as a family of three and looking forward to the family of four. And that's every chapter, you know, you, you, um, you know, anyways, try to just know what it is when it's happening. And if that's, that's the most we can do, you know, and appreciate it and see it and moving on. Hence his life. Yeah. So you're on sabbatical and you're putting together some material for yeah. music lovers. Yeah, I've been, lovers. I've been putting together a lot of um, Lili Okalani's music. So uh, Lili U Okalani, um, the <clears throat> the queen, you know, uh, and her. Uh, there's an online digital archive and um, you know in-person archives at the Bishop Museum. And I've been, you know, digging around and trying to find as many handwritten, um, you know, standard music notation music by her. And, and there's a huge uh, resource, actually. She's got over 100, I'm up to about 130-something uh, pieces of music now, uh, melodies, you know. There's no chords written in there, but it's just, you know, nice melodies or maybe like uh, four voice, you know, some arrangements are in four voices. Um, and it's just really interesting, you know, and, I, and I'm... Basically working on putting all those um, together in um, order of difficulty. And so like the simplest piece um, called A Chant, uh, she wrote for Bernice Powahi Bishop's uh, funeral, actually, her Hanai sister. And uh, so it's kind of a, a deep piece. There's some reverency there. But I, I, I like the idea of using that as an introductory piece because it really gives a reverence for um, music you know, and what we're doing and the endeavor of learning to, to play, you know, and, um, and, you know, some of the focus is on, on reading notes, you know, and getting to appreciate note reading because that's the way that, um, she wrote down the music was all standard treble clef notation, but I am going to include, um, tablature in the book as well, just to make it more accessible. Uh, and really the idea, you know, that the queen had was she wanted to get these songs of hers and, um, some, you know, traditional melodies, um, just kind of out there and in the hands and ears of, of her people, you know. And um, and if putting tablature makes it that much more accessible and then adding some chord symbols above with little charts or whatever just to make it that much easier to strum along, then that's serving the mission, you know, of uh, getting that music out there. Yeah, Because it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of music for, for the land and music that she composed, that she felt close to, that's got a lot of... Um, <clears throat> you know, name chants and, and different things that are um, really, I think, culturally important, you know. Um, so she has like a hundred some transcriptions written out, uh, 150 songs or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's pretty deep, you know, and 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 and, and you know, I'm taking a much more instrumental approach to it, you know, about just playing the melodies and really that's what it's about, you know. Um, there are lyrics that she included with all of these mele, all of these songs. Um, and I'm not going to be, you know, trying to go down that road and have like the reprinted lyrics and then everything like that would, it would end up being a, a huge novel um, of a book. I mean, maybe down the road it could be some kind of huge. It sounds like a novel but, already. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> you know, out of those 150, I'm probably going to end up using maybe 40 or so compositions um, to get us through the beginning book. And then it'll probably. Guitar being, and ukulele? Yeah. Yeah, both. Yeah, so guitar um, and ukulele. A lot of the, you know some of the songs. Um, I, I transpose them depending on the instrument. You know, um, it, it works perfect for guitar, right? Maybe like E F G first string, but then to put it on ukulele, it maybe works a little better if I put it um, in a different key. And maybe it, um, yeah, that things like maybe that. we can record some play alongs. Or yeah, the visual. Oh, that aspect. would be great. Yeah, it's because I'm hoping to put you know some <clears throat> in in with each musical example to have like a little QR code on your phone. You can just pump that. Oh, cracking a beer. No, anyway, that was something else. That, but, was a, <laughs> that was a pick drop. Yeah. Um, and so the idea being, um, you know, if if I can include like even a video with a little QR code, and then you play, you know, see the melody, you can click on that link, and then you can see a video of me playing it, or you can yeah. you know, hear an audio, even get like an MP3 download kind of a thing. Just making um, it ultra accessible. Yeah, exactly. And if you think about it, you know, one of one of the reasons, too, I want to try to include video is that's a very um, Hawaiian way of learning, you know, um, and nana a ho'olohe, right? Um, nana is to look and to observe, and ho'olohe is to listen, Yeah. The beginning of that actually is Hamau Kaleo. 
and it would just shut your voice. <laughs> be, be quiet. Nan, uh, hamau kaleo, nana aho olohe, right? Like, be quiet, shut your voice, you know, shut your mouth, and watch and listen. I like how you put that so very delicately, like, when it, when it could just be like, hey, shut up. And yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> shut up and just in listen. the end, in the end, right, if it's a video, <clears throat> what are you going to do? Talk at the video? There are. So you instantly, it or not, like, actually, just, people just who the do inner- this. This is true. But inherently, my point is, you know, inherently, just having a video makes you nana aho olohe. Right? What, you, what are you doing now? You're watching this video. Guess what? You're watching the podcast. And you're watching and you're listening. You know, and that's an amazing way to immerse yourself and to learn. But unless you're really doing those two things, what are you doing? You know, I have a, I have another friend of mine. He was um, he's a carpenter, and I think I might have mentioned this on a different podcast. But um, you know, I was watching him, <clears throat> and I was going to help out later with putting in some tile flooring. You know, and he's like doing it. Bam, 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 bam. He's like, "Are you watching? Or are you learning?" And I that kind of blew me away. I was like, oh, yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. Are you just staring? Or are you... Computing. Intaking, yeah. computing, calculating, working. Like, there is passive just looking at it. Or are you engaged, figuring it out, trying to memorize where things, what finger is he using, asking yourself questions about it, building pattern, pattern recognition, whatever it is. Right? Are you learning or are you just watching? I don't know if I heard that kind of sound for somebody doing my flooring. It'd be like, I'd be kind of surprised. Like, you, why are you pounding my floors? Well, these were <laughs> these were like um, bing, bing. The, uh, the hammer in like um, ah yeah yes with the mallet the sheets and, the, and yeah. you have the rubber mallet. Corey's that jerk standing over a craftsman <laughs> yeah. telling him like he's doing something wrong. Uh, why are you <laughs> doing <laughs> that? Man, we're not in a good mood today. You know, Man, we started <laughs> dark and we're just I dark. Don't think I've ever. I seen was raised in the streets. <laughs> I never had a lawnmower. <laughs> well, I and, knew what a lawnmower was because I was woken up by one. Like every Saturday, by the guy that used to take care of the place. Okay. I was like, I, they had a guy that took care of the place. All right, I'm in, I'm emotional. Anyway, right? I'm not, just I'm let me just be judging. emotional. I'm right? saying the story is turning here. I was. <laughs> no, but I yeah, there's different levels of uh, experiencing something, and you know, no. If somebody wants to like watch our videos just passively for enjoyment. But there's like a level where you can be dissecting what's happening, right? Really right. trying to take away yep. as much as possible. Yeah, and it can be moment by moment, right? Like some videos, like some moments of the video may be more important than others, right? But the point being, if you're always attentive and you're always paying attention, you're really activated and listening, like you're learning that much more, right? And what's that Hawaiian way of learning? I like imagine the way that Hawaiians learned like a 2,000 line chant, right? Like the Kumulipo, like the creation chant. Like the Hawaiian way of learning was like, like you heard do it. Do it the way I do. Do it yeah. the way I do. Listen to me do it. This is how I do it. You come We're going to do it, it together exactly maybe it. and then you're going to do it. Okay, that's the lesson, Pau. Like, yeah. what? Oh. Yeah. But, got so, it? Do it. Go home. Practice. The, Do it again. The queen transcribed these things probably also because she wanted her people to learn music well, right. and it yeah. to be more than just the enjoyment or, you know, I mean, possibly things well, don't get translated down the line. You well, know? and some of it, it, it harkens to like what was common in her time, right? Like the, why did she notate it in standard notation and not in tablature? Like not, right? Was that a and, thing? Well, well, that it was. <laughs> you know, no, actually, tab tab predates. The queen's Western. not even tabbing it out. <laughs> Yo, well, tablature was a thing. Yes, it very much was a thing. This is the people. Queen, <laughs> misses <laughs> tabs. <laughs> Miss any tabs, She's like, please. Get, get this guy out of here. You're being held <laughs> captive put up there. The, you, you put him in the, the chamber. Time. So that that chamber's like that. <laughs> Stick him in the chamber. Ask it for tabs. <laughs> Loser. Yeah, Curry's no, in jail. no, they did. Well, well, for one, two, two, two points. One is tabs actually predate uh, regular Western notation, like standard music notation. Really, tabs are older. Tabs are a more basic way. They go back to the lute, you know, back six centuries, and tablature was first. Tabs are OG. Kind of makes sense. 
Well, it's more basic, right? Like, you just draw the lines, and then you put a number for which one you press. Yeah. At first, they used letters. You know, uh, it was like A for first fret, B for second fret, so on. I mean, for stringed instruments, it also... And, or it might have been A for open. I and what, like, peasants were like, like, I don't know how to read these. Just, I know one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> what is this dash? This is one. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Back well, then, they were playing music. Tabs! <laughs> Bach is like, what? Well, and, and the second point being that I think she put it into notation because at that time, um, Hawaiians were 90% literate in English and Hawaiian, right? Like, we, were, we, we celebrate the, the akamai, right? The, the cleverness and how thirsty for knowledge Hawaiians were. You know, as a culture, like so, it's not just a thing. Like, it's not just to say, like, you know, being Hawaiian is take care of the aina and take care of the land. But being Hawaiian is also to like do things as good as you can. Yeah, they had because some of the first schools and like oh yeah, the royal school, the Kamehameha schools, all of these different you know um, like avenues. How, they celebrated. Education. How old was the queen when she first started writing music? Well, she was in elementary school, you know, and she said her quote, you know, basically is, is something to the effect of, I don't remember a, an age and a time where I couldn't read and write music as easily as breathing. Like, meaning she could sight sing and she could read, like, she could look at a piece of music and play it on the piano from just looking at it. And she doesn't even remember learning how to do that. She could just always do that. She started at such a young age, you know, which is thanks to the Cook family and the Cook um, teachers. She's know. the goat. For queens, I mean, come on. I don't think there's ever going to be a queen that awesome. <laughs> she wrote tabs, man. <laughs> I don't know if she wrote tabs, but here's the thing. Like that, but that, my that, point is that, like, with, points with people being in the books. so literate, I think that reading no need music. For tabs. They <laughs> all, like, they all read like, music. That's what my point is. She's yes. like, hey guys, I got tabs. And they're like, yo, hey. Stop talking about tabs. <laughs> I'm going to include That's tabs, queen. but the point being is that she. Like, she put it out in sheet music because most people, a lot of people, enough people, <laughs> in her opinion, could read and would be able to translate it and then know how the melody goes. Like, she was like, well, at least probably one person per household. Like, Man, what know, happened or to society? It's, like, digressing. <laughs> well, and this was common, actually, elsewhere. Like, there's a lot of music out there. Like, there's even, and this is a very different deal, but, you know, this is, people had a lot of time on their hands. And um, people, a lot more people knew how to read music, I think, percentage wise. I, I suspect, I don't know this. I wonder if there's now no, they're just on TikTok. I wonder if there's no, <laughs> yeah, well, as the musicologist out there that knows about that. But, but the idea being that, you know, there were some pieces of music going back even to box time that if you looked at it, it was written one way and you could play it and it sounded good. But you could sit with a friend who would sit opposite from you on the table and they would read the music from bottom to top. What? Or the other way, and it would play, and it sounded harmonious together. In the middle, you played the same note. Oh, That's some sorcery! <laughs> yeah, what? That is insane. Isn't that some boss so one, like, composing right there? One person that is starts from the end, right and the other person yeah. starts from the beginning. Yeah, you start from the end. You start from opposite ends. And it's but do 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 harmonizing do 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 middle do 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 work the other way, and then the end. Oh, that's. I guess if you're in the same key and it's like you know no, but interesting oh what is it what's the technique where like somebody starts the song a verse after and then around right yeah. or, or something like that like a yeah. uh, measure like um uh, row 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 your boat or around yeah. right where each one layers in right um yeah gets a little chaotic but it's fun yeah but yeah that's another level of that but the, but the idea being that um you know playing music at home was commonplace that's my point. You know, and like reading people that were writing well, it. yeah. People read. People just read music. That's what they they didn't like go to their iPod. They were like, oh, I want to entertain myself somehow. Here, let's pick up the music book, do some sight reading. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like I said no one ever. <laughs> well, said, said people about <laughs> three hundred years ago. <laughs> two hundred, two hundred years ago, that was amazing. Okay, oh, well, two hundred years ago, that what was are you so fun. I'm just reading the paper. Huh. <laughs> Look what I'm reading. We music, have like, bro. 
different dopamine hits these days. It's like uh, yeah. on another level. We're just yeah. getting like floored all the time with everything. Well, well, there's and that's a diff slightly different conversation, right? But the idea being that we're instant gratification culture. Yeah. Right? We we get frustrated when it's not loading fast enough, and it's like, do you realize how amazing? what you're doing is you're holding a thing in your hand that's going to play a video that you yeah. just pushed a button. You've just pressed a little triangle and now you're waiting mm -hmm. and you have to wait 30 more seconds and you're mad. <laughs> but also if we're teaching kids ads, how to read music when they're learning how to read words, it's like, I mean, like at 45 years old, if I'm going to start to learn to read music now, it's going to be like a whole thing where like at that point in a child's life, things come as you yeah well it's like learning put languages, importance on right? them yeah like how how you know we we're, we're trying more now you know to definitely um anytime there's any kind of screen time which is very limited right at his age but um try to make sure we play it in french you know and so if he wants to know what's going on he's got to he's got to decipher that you know wow and, you set the um, standard extremely well my high. wife speaks <laughs> french too and, and oh, so we're okay, trying fair to enough. And, and uh, encourage that bilingual nature. And then I use a lot of Olelo Hawaii whenever I can. You know, um, I'm not fluent, but I, um, you know, I took a few years in high school, a couple in college, and I'm, you know, uh, um, it's very much I think it's important, you know, for him to know some Hawaiian language just growing up and for it to normalize it, you know, not for it not to be weird, to be like, oh, can you, oh, take this, go throw it in the opala, you know, even if it's just um, sprinkling words, you know, like. In a few years, he's basically going to be Tahitian with the. <laughs> French, oh, the French in the whole thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, that took me a second. I was like, what? <laughs> Is something going to happen I don't know about? Is he moving? <laughs> Corey's it's not that complex, field. but... Know him. I feel like, so, like, you know the, the evolution of the, the phone sizes, right? Everything's like, oh my god, it's getting smaller. It's going to get bigger. And with the, the attitude of people are like, hey, tabs, uh, this and that. They're going to be like, hey, can you just do it for me? Phones are going to get big enough to where they're going to start doing things for people, like playing music. And yeah, that's that's our... That's Can we pause for a minute, yeah. actually? Absolutely. Have to run to the little boys' room. And we're back. <laughs> 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 What you just heard is a brand new limited series from Rebel, and this is going to be this was donated for the Maui Fire fundraiser, and this is incredible. We haven't gotten a whole lot of Rebels in stock for some time, and this is very unique. As you can see, just by looking from the front, you can see two different types of woods. Most times, when when I see multiple types of woods, is usually a half and half. But in this case, you have spalted mango on the outside with mahogany in the center, which gives it a very, very nice look. It contrasts the different colors and wood grains of the mango. Mango on the sides, rosewood binding. And just like the binding, we have rosewood on the back, uh, which is really interesting because Rebel has been doing some cool work for a while. And they always think outside of the box. They're not tried, uh, afraid to try new new things that they haven't done before. And this is a good example. And slotted headstock. You'll notice that this is more on the thinner side with the Goto Stealth tuning keys here. And 
I think this was Greek inspired. This is a symbol that stands for integrity. And so these are going to be very limited. So there's only going to be a small handful of these available. And we were lucky to get these in. So check them out. So the other one that's um, up for auction here is the new, the new version of the Alchemist. And the Alchemist was a limited edition that came out in 2015. And I think they made like 20 some or something like that. And um, it was really well loved. And ever since people have asked us about it, but it was just this run they did. But those originally were like, I want to say mahogany and spruce. This oh, one, they've got yeah. curly mango and spruce. And then the first ones were rosewood. And this is paduk. Corey. Tell us more and give us a sample. So, newest version of the Alchemist. Um, you got this beautiful strip of spruce running down the center and this really thin piece of spruce that runs through the um, sound hole, offset, completely offset sound hole here right at the bottom of the upper bout. Um, it's almost like a racing stripe. Yeah. And it's really, um, we're talking about how intricate the design is because there's this, even when as far as... A little connecting piece. Yeah. And when you look uh, closely at it, they actually cut that out, put a piece of mango there, but they put a, a color of mango wood that looks like it's a seamless design um, until you like really look at it. It's like, wow, they went out of their way to... To cut a little piece there to, yeah. Um, that with the arm bevel, not one, but four side ports. Um, Paduk, very good tone wood. Very nice gloss finish. Um, this is one of the um, unique bridge designs for Rebels. This is like the, kind of like the upgraded rebel bridge um the fretboard design too kind of has like this swoosh which is nice you see it on a lot of uh custom instruments um but yeah this is kind of like the alchemist reinvented these are built extremely lightweight um, fluorocarbon strings on the factory, so you got a lot of brightness, a lot of sustain, fullness. You get pretty much everything from this. Yeah. One thing I really like is the neck profile. It is one of the most comfortable necks you can have on an ukulele. You never ever struggle with these. This is pretty incredible. Um, Grover tuners. These are really smooth. Um, it's these kind of like uh, soft touch buttons up here, which are um, really nice. They're um, they remind me a lot of the Goto, was that the fifty something series. Um, very smooth. Too. I'm glad they brought this series back because uh, a lot of people fell in love with it right away with not only the look and the design of it, but the way it sounds. So, yeah, the new Alchemist from Rebel. And this one is going for Maui. So look out for the auction to this. Give us a sample. Thank you. 
Very nice. Such a sweet glow to the tune. I want to put some some more amazing ukes in your guys' hands. Really quick. If you're a connoisseur of the finest ukuleles out there, Petros is definitely got to be on your list. Oh, it's still on my list. I know, right? <laughs> it's like every time it's just like, wow, such a perfect balance. Of, yeah, it's such a well-balanced instrument, for real. They're so easy it's to just, play, too. It sound, well, it, what it, what's nice about it is it sounds like what you think it's going to sound like. 
Mm. Like it, it gives a lot. Sometimes you you go to you know lower notes, and all of a sudden it's like it's like really thuddy or yeah. things like that, or it can or it can disappear before you're ready to it to dip, you know. And um, yeah, this this seems to have a very balanced sound everywhere. Extremely you know? balanced. A lot of no our wolf customers, notes. a lot of our customers would ask, like, "What do you mean by like balance?" You know, and it's nice to hear it from someone else. Yeah, there's too. no, there's no notes that are all of a sudden louder than others. Yeah, you know, um, sort of just see almost randomly. You know, uh, like for guitars, a lot of times it's the note A, like the open A string can be like crazy too loud, um, but it has to do with kind of the bracing and the way the instrument's made, and so, um, yeah. This guy seems to have figured it out. <laughs> he cracked the code. <laughs> oh. Maybe you guys could play that Nora Jones song all together. Can I switch the guitar? This one or yeah. Just... All right. <laughs>
I'm at lips purple because I was holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's got his, the latest addition to his instrument repertoire, the Pono NL30. Uh, super small body nylon string lattice brace guitar. <laughs> Typical of the lattice build. Big punch. But extreme color differences. Even within a position. Like it's really able to say a lot right so you can do those like i've mentioned before i think on a different podcast but the idea between playing warm and bright or warm and bright even within a position right so we can kind of get warm warm or bright bright or warm bright or uh, warm yeah or bright. but <laughs> anyways it has a great uh has such a great palette um played so many guitars over the years and it's hard to have a nylon string guitar have that fullness and uh, I'm blown away by these 
I, you know, the lattice bracing makes all the difference. It, it um, opens up. It really it allows the instrument, I feel like, to say everything it wants to say. A, a lot of things can feel muffled otherwise, but just the resonance of a lattice brace is so satisfying. Like, the instrument is like, yeah, I heard you. I heard what you were trying to tell me to do. And it, you know, it can speak it. It's like it's it's gotten the all that clutter off of it. I don't know. Yeah, this is like the little brother to your... Yeah, no, totally. And it feel, it's funny because it feels so familiar, even though I haven't spent as, nearly as much time on the instrument. It definitely has um, a lot of familiar characteristics. So, Ian did like a bunch of lessons for us. Uh, that are going to be up at our, our member site. But also before you guys got here, we were recording for a few hours and there's like a, a number of different sound samples um, or he was sampling different instruments. One of them was this uh, Tularusa, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. I thought that was just a one-time thing. Because he made, he made more of these... Uh, Cornerstone Baritone has a 2,850-year-old ancient spruce top and black and white ebony. And um, we're going to be giving you guys more samples of this along with um, the Petros that Calais has because they're, they're worthy of multiple instruments. We'll probably be recording tomorrow. so wonderful to have you three together playing the world's best instruments it's like... the best seat is sitting in between these two because yeah, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> like oh, you hear something you're just like oh oh wait i'm playing too <laughs> me i'm just like i'm trying to i'm i'm surviving <laughs> surviving so, uh, I, I love i love how you mix in percussion with your playing yeah, I was, I was about to say that you're like when you're doing the whole thing, you're like a you're like a pilot, like of an airline. You know, like the, the pilot's like <laughs> flipping switches, throttle, showing some Andy McKee or something here. <laughs> summer to go to Lahaina actually in, in gosh it was mid-July and played a concert right in, in Lahaina there and, and we came home and just like not even a few weeks later you know we were like what the heck wow and um and and we were just there and and I was feeling really like man I, I I'm glad that my wife like on our way out you know she said like hey why don't we just drive through Lahaina instead of heading straight up to the highway you know we'll drive through the town and we did that was the last time and that'll be the last time right at least to see it as as it was you know because i'm sure we'll go back one day but i mean not the same yeah and just to to have known that and so i wrote a piece um and and it you know i'm thinking about the name still perhaps something like um hanel ho you know like a rebirth you know um because whatever the story is that's what's going to have to happen mm. right uh, there's going to be a rebirth and and, um, and Lahaina is going to you know um, and, and so so I wrote this this song you know instrumental song um, piece and I use a lot of sixes this this interval it's very almost um, you know pop like um, almost like Justin Bieberish or something, you know, somebody would Almost use. Almost sounds like a Coldplay song too. <laughs> right, those kind of intervals. Um, but the idea was that I, I, I had never really written something using those because they were just so obvious, and I thought, well, maybe that's a little used, or I, you know, I can stay away from, shy away from that. 
but I found myself using these things that I was maybe taking for granted, you know, and, and like, man, it's such an obvious choice. Why hadn't I done that before? And, you know, I feel kind of the same way about Paula Haina. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the time that we had spent there. And, um, you know, so this is, anyways, if you want to follow, it's just in D. Um, and it basically goes D up to up a step. Not, not D theoretical, right? Like D. <laughs> I think so. I mean, layman's man, layman's terms. Yeah, D, D layman, E minor, F sharp minor, G, six, five, four, five, three, four, something around there, and then the other changes. And then, and it's um, I wanted to write something that gave room for contemplation, right? Like, so it's like the first bar right away. And we get just a little ipu rhythm, right? Just to remember, like, what, where Lahaina is grounded. You know, it was the capital um, of, of the nation. Right? Yeah. And, um, and it's important. And then just to, just to, 
you know, I think a lot of times I end up writing things, and, and then it's gonna, and then it's, and then it's gonna, and then it's gonna, and why don't we just, like... Whatever it is, right? And just, just let it breathe. Yeah, yeah. And just to take some time and kind of, you know, I was just inspired by the, the moment my wife was like, let's just take a drive. And I was like, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad we did that. Yeah. Nice. That's beautiful. It's a nice song, man. Like, yeah. You haven't recorded that yet either. No, this is that was the world premiere right there. <laughs> yeah. You're sitting on some gems. <laughs> so you have a whole Disney album that you're sitting on too yeah it's just, been just incredible stuff when's well, that I, well i don't know i basically have to just hit upload and we're good to go in a way but um i've just been are you um, working on your website for the... yeah so i want to wait until my website's up and running and everything is in place before i go ahead and pull the trigger on there and then what you know? Because if the album's out and then people are like, "Oh, cool! Well, let's check this guy out," and then it's not ready yet, and then I don't know. Like, I guess it'd be better just to have it out there. But um, kind of a perfectionist in some ways, so I don't know. I don't. <clears throat> just not in a rush these days. You know, there's a lot going on, and um, I feel like you know there's time for that. You know. I don't know. I didn't release a Disney album for 40 years, so I can wait another year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you it's, know, I, I, I like, it's yeah. It's timeless music. It's good yeah, to be Yeah, it exactly. And that's why I, re- I recorded it and I'm working on it. And... It's pretty cool that you, um, you have all these kid-friendly songs ready for your little kids. Oh, yeah. Well, that was kind of my theme, and as soon as I became a dad, I was like, you know what, I'm, I spent all this time arranging, I may as well arrange a bunch of music I can play for my kids, since I'll probably be doing a lot of practicing around them. Yeah. <laughs> together you want to try one of those disney ones i did it last time solo but i think we could probably do it together um cruella de vil and do that in g it's like a g blues okay so so i guess C. A7, D7, G. Okay. On a hope, G, N.
sick. <laughs> Man. Yeah. What a was, cool booze. That was illegal. <laughs> I was just like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just... Oh, this fun. is in G Ridiculous. G Major. <laughs> G Rager. G Hammer. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, probably gonna yeah one more and then say night or something. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian. What an amazing night. Yeah, my e- pleasure. Thanks for having me, and thanks for sticking around for so long. You know. Oh man, even your lessons, I'm so grateful. Yeah, that'll be really fun. You know, it's some absurd stuff. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. No, it's all it's gold in my mind. Yeah. Well taught some taught some fun stuff. Yeah. A lot of Benny Chong things. <laughs> Dad. Speaking of yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, the Queen loved tabs. Although she did, you know, she had two guitar books. She had two books for guitar in her own private collection, which the state archives have. Um, and they didn't have tabs. It Ooh. was just straight notation. Nice. So she owned guitar books that were just notation. So I'm thinking she read. That's cool. She had two guitar books, not just one. She had two guitar books. She didn't have two of any other books. She Wasn't had like one piano time? book, one violin piano book, one vocal book, and two guitar books. Is that like? Wow, I thought she composed on piano mostly. She composed on 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 guitar too. Yeah. Wow. I think she would write it down in standard treble clef, like for singers mostly or for choral music is what she's known for, and some piano accompaniment. But as far as her own writing, um, I, I, I get the strong feeling that she was very Akamai to the, the fretboard. Her music is very Hawaiian. I mean, it's kind of like the staple of, of a lot of Hawaiian music. But then there's such an understanding of classical and Americana yeah. and all kinds of everything that was going on at the time as well. That's going to be really cool when you come out with that. And, and I'm looking forward to anything you want as far as help in terms of uh, having recorded accompaniment for the book. I, I think it sounds like something that could be picked up um, as a curriculum for even elementary and middle school. Um, you know, a way to teach reading and music to the kids yeah that's why you know i'm really hoping that it's uh it's a way to get the music out there that she you know wanted to get out not only get out there but just to um you know for those for those of us that are fans of the queen you know just to get maybe a a little step closer to understanding music the way she understood it you know um and if we want to get inside the heads of composers and things like that i think just understanding the language that they wrote it down in is helpful you know um, getting more it just gets us that much closer to the source material so you know if anything it'll be just really fun to read the tablature and look straight across the page and see the standard notation that she wrote it out and be able to kind of line up like oh here's the tab note i play that's the first note that she wrote without even knowing much you can go like well that's what that is that's cool that i'm in a way i'm reading right from it almost you know as close as you can get you know so we'll see yeah it's uh it's, it's been a really amazing project and um just blessed that she wrote so much great music and so much of it that um i think is going to be really um rewarding you know to learn and and play and and make it you know you're not just learning a whole note now you know now it's like oh i'm learning a chant written for bernice powahi bishop that lilio kalani composed for bernice powahi bishop's funeral like that's pretty profound and now it's not just a whole note now that's got some mana to it right and like that's been and not a lot of times that's the problem with learning to read music is like there's just a lot of information and a lot of it maybe isn't meaningful or something at first you know it's like why am i learning to count to four i know how to do that right but if it can be sort of incorporated with this uh, value and added culture element and just knowing that it's from her hand and you know um, i think that makes it more inspiring and 
meaningful. So, yeah. Should we end with a song by the Queen? Yeah. Sonoy? way the world is lucky to have you and we're lucky to have you come by and thank you guys this was i thought we were just gonna maybe be recording some lessons and when you said that you could stay late i'm messaging them hey you guys come down it's gonna be fun <laughs> and, and we're all like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like ian hell yeah <laughs> so thank you guys we'll see you soon and um i know it might be a little while because you got baby coming but it's as soon as you can make it back onto the podcast, we'd love it. And thank you for everything. Mahalo Nui. Thank you. See you, see you uh, next year. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> Halloween 24. We'll see you. Something like that. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, can yeah, get away with yeah. it. You get a colicky baby like yeah, I had. You're going you're gonna to want to figure out how to come over. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, just, I'll be here with the babies. <laughs> all right. We're oh. doing it. Oh, my God. All right. It's all hammer ons. <laughs> yeah. Your son is going to be strumming. One hand in the bottle. <laughs> I have a picture of when my, my son was a baby and I've got the bottle up and I'm like drinking a beer next to him. <laughs> We're both just chugging. That's funny. Up. Dad life. All right, guys. Aloha. Aloha. I'll see you soon. Wow. So warm.
What's the actual tuning? A D F A D. This is a D chord. D F A. D F sharp A. Sanoi. Hone Akovai, Ernest Kai. <laughs> 